Good evening. I know that many people are feeling fear and anxiety about the spread of the coronavirus. That's entirely understandable. This is an unprecedented situation, both in the nature of public health challenge and the steps that we are taking to protect our residents. So tonight, I want to talk to you about what the city has done to be prepared, how we'll continue to work together to keep the people of Boston healthy and safe, and what this crisis demands of each and every one of us, individually, together, as we move forward. Make no mistake, this is a serious situation, but we are blessed in Boston with some of the world's brightest minds in medicine. Teams at City Hall and across our communities are working around the clock to plan and support every phase of life in our city. And I want you to know we are not powerless and you are not alone. Here are the facts. To date, 218 residents of Massachusetts have tested positive for the coronavirus. 42 of those cases are here in the city of Boston. Public health officials expect those numbers to increase in the near future. But with knowledge and collective action, we can slow that growth. The most common symptoms of the coronavirus are fever, coughing, and shortness of breath. Most people recover by managing, managing their symptoms at home. If you think you're getting sick, isolate yourself from others and call your health care provider or call 311 to talk to the mayor's health line. But, and this is important, older adults and people of age are certainly, certain health conditions are at greater risk for severe complications, including pneumonia and bronchitis. Any one of us could put them at risk. That's why we're working so hard to slow the spread of this virus. And that's why we're asking every single resident to help, no matter your age or your health status. The actions of all, all of us take now, will save lives. So keep thoroughly washing your hands and sanitizing your hands frequently throughout the day. Keep wiping down surfaces with disinfectant. Keep covering your cough and sneeze. And above all, avoid crowds, maintain a distance of at least six feet from other people, and stay home as much as possible. It's okay to go out for a walk and get fresh air and to clear your mind. But remember, this is not a time for house parties, play dates, or visiting friends. We need everyone to limit their contact with each other right now. This is the social distancing that we're learning and practicing together as a city. It's a new situation for our city, but it's a known solution to the challenge we face. And I want to be very clear about how it works. Social distancing is not only for people in high-risk categories, this is everyone's responsibility because anyone can catch and spread this virus. It's especially important for younger, healthier people to think beyond your own personal concerns. Think instead of the power and the responsibility that each of us has to protect the people, especially the most vulnerable, we share with our city. You may have heard about flattening the curve. That's what this is all about. We will see numbers increase in the coming days but we can prevent the kind of spike that could cause our health system to be overwhelmed. With social distancing, we can slow the spread and give our world-class medical providers the time and resources they need to treat everyone who needs care. We simply need everyone's help. And that's how we'll get through this. And that's how we'll get back to life and to a normal life in our city. And that's what we're doing right now. In the city of Boston, we've taken early and decisive action. The Boston Public Health Commission has been on this situation since early January, monitoring all cases, informing our response, and maintaining constant contact with our partners in government and in healthcare. To give us the ability to respond quickly with resources and coordination, we have declared a public health emergency in the city of Boston, joining similar declarations by the federal and state governments. To keep you informed and supported, we've created a webpage, boston.gov slash coronavirus. And please share information only from trusted sources. To protect our communities, we canceled all city events involving more than 25 people, and all major sports organizations put their schedules on hold. To protect our children and all of our residents, we closed the Boston Public Schools and we created a plan to keep all 53,000 students fed and engaged with learning activities for up to six weeks out of school. 
to protect our families. We've closed all gyms and pools. We've closed every branch of the Boston Public Library. We have thousands of ebooks and audiobooks and movies free online for you. Visit bpl.org to learn more. To protect workers, we've ordered a pause to construction, with the exception of essential safety related projects. We're lifting up regulations to allow restaurants to offer takeout and delivery services. And we're ready to help any establishment get set up with a delivery service. And at City Hall, we, we have employees on site who are critical to the operations of the city. We're going to keep picking up the trash and recycling. We're going to continue cleaning our streets, but not what, we're not going to be ticketing or towing cars. We're going to keep our, cleaning our parks. We're going to keep coordinating our food access for our children and families. We're going to keep reaching out to support our seniors. We're going to continue to serve our veterans and our immigrant communities and our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness. And our first responders are working on a duty because our safety is our top priority. I want to thank all of our dedicated public employees for their service to the people of Boston in this very difficult time. I want to say a special word about our seniors. Last week, I called my mother. I said, Mom, I want to be clear and I want you to be very careful. This is serious. You have to wash your hands throughout the day, use hand sanitizer, no hugs or kisses for visitors or nieces or nephew. In fact, they probably shouldn't come over for a while. You need to keep your distance from people. If you need anything from the store, we'll pick it up for you. She is gonna miss the company of family and friends for now, but they're gonna talk on the phone. I know I'm not the only one having these conversations. It really hit home for me what our seniors and their families are going through right now. So I want to let you know that we're thinking of you. Our Age Strong Commission is reaching out to senior buildings and service providers and sending phone messages with clear information in multiple languages. We are working to continue the in-home service that many seniors rely on, including groceries and Meals on Wheels. We are working to ensure that home health care workers and personal care attendants have the materials that they need. Nursing homes and assisted living facilities are not allowing visitors. It's important that we adhere to that. And it's important that everyone who's interacting with seniors take precautions. Wash with soap, sanitize and disinfect, keep your distance. I want all of our seniors and their families to know that we are here for you. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to call us at 311 and talk to our Age Strong Commission. This is what social distancing is so important right now. It will help our hospitals care for those most in need. It will help us protect everyone. I know many people have questions about what's next and whether we're going to have a shelter in place order, as we've seen in some other places and parts of the country and the world. We are not currently at that point, but we are monitoring the situation closely. It's not a decision that should be made lightly or in isolation. For that reason, I am and will continue to be in conversation with the governor and state officials. Ultimately, we will do what's best for the health and well-being of the people of Boston and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. But right now, every single one of us has a role to play. Every single one of us is impacting what happens moving forward. So I'm asking you tonight, follow the precautions that we're recommending. This is not someone else's responsibility. It's yours, it's mine, it's ours. I also know none of this is easy. Routines are suddenly interrupted. Our plans are put on hold. We're missing people and feeling lonely. Some working people are losing paychecks, worried about bills, and struggling with childcare. And through it all, many of the people we want to wrap our arms around the most are the very people we must keep our arm, at arm's length for their own safety. These experiences present unique challenges to the shared strength and solidarity that we need in these times like this. How do we come together so that social distancing doesn't become social isolation? How do we draw on our shared strength if we can't share spaces? How do we take care of each other, lift each other's spirits, and get through this together as one Boston? I've seen the answer growing in our city faster than the virus can spread. Bostonians are coming together in thousands of ways to take care of our most vulnerable neighbors. 
City agencies and nonprofits who serve homeless are implementing plans to prevent the virus from spreading in shelters. And we have identified safe sites where we can test and treat people who have the symptoms. We worked with housing advocates and property owners and the Boston Housing Authority to halt all eviction proceedings until this crisis is over. We're in talks with lenders and landlords to prevent loan defaults and evictions for small businesses. Utility providers are agreeing to suspend service shutoffs. And we've spoken to grocery store chains who assured us that the supply chain is strong, shelves are being restocked, and home delivery will continue. And I want to thank Stop and Shop for putting on special morning hours just for our seniors. I encourage all stores to do the same. Our school plan is bringing Chromebooks and internet access into the homes of thousands of children and families. Nonprofits and city agencies are mobilizing food access points all across our city. Every day, residents and small businesses are reaching out to my office to, to, and to their neighbors with the offer of food and resources. We've seen people postpone elective surgeries in order to free up hospital beds. We are, talking, we are, working, we are watching workers take extra shifts to clean and sanitize workplaces and public areas. And over a dozen companies in, have come together with donations in the, with the city to help us form the Boston Resiliency Fund, a resource to feed children and seniors, low-income workers, and families in need, and provide important child care service to first responders and home health care personnel who are staying on the job to protect us while their children are at home. In 24 hours, we raised over $10 million from nearly 500 donations. And our goal, with everyone's help, is to reach $20 million for the people of Boston. I, don't want, I want to encourage everyone to take the hope from this movement in our city, from this new chapter in the story of Boston. Anyone can be part of it, and everyone should be part of it. Simply by choosing to practice social distancing, you are already showing you care about your neighbors and your city. I want to thank you. And I want to encourage everyone to go one step further. Reach out to a neighbor, to a senior, to someone with a medical condition, to, to a parent with children, to anyone who could use a word of support or a connection to a resource. By phone calls, texting, emails, video chat, or just a smile across the hallway or a smile across the yard. Let them know they're not alone. You might be surprised what it does for your own stress. I learned in my own recovery that to keep your peace of mind, sometimes you've got to share it with someone else. And you get through anything one day at a time. Let's make those habits part of our new routine. We're going to be feeling socially and economic impacts of this crisis for some time. So we're going to keep relying on each other. These are not ordinary times in our city. But there's nothing ordinary about Boston. Bostonians are resilient forged in hard times and committed to a higher purpose. We are being tested again, but just look at who we are and the strength that we possess. We are medical professionals who heal and care for the sick. We are police, fire, and EMTs rushing to help whenever there's someone suffering. We are teachers and child care workers who devote their lives to our young people. We are veterans who made immense sacrifices for the greater good. We are construction workers who build our hospitals, our schools, our firehouses, our homes, our workplaces. We are custodians, park workers, grocery store clerks, small business owners, people suddenly on the front lines of a crisis, stepping forward without reservation to help. We are immigrants who survive long, difficult journeys. We are an LGBT community who showed us how to come together to fight an epidemic. We are people in recovery from addiction. We are people of faith. We are the seniors who paved the way for all of us. We are a city of miracles and comebacks. There's nothing we can't do when we stand together. We've faced frightening situations before, and we learned what it means to be Boston strong. That's the strength we need right now, and that's what's so meaningful about this fight. It's never been more clear we need each other. We depend on each other. Every one of us has equal value. Every one of us has a person purpose. Every single Bostonian has a role to play to do your part and defend our city. We've been knocked down before, but we always get back up. And with the vigilance and patience, 
with empathy and love, we will get through this together. I want to say God bless you, God bless the city of Boston, and God bless the United States of America.